Hi, welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to talk about more about funding transition states and the importance of uh, solvation and exploring different pathways. So this work deal, dealt with N-heterocyclic olefins producing a, a aromatic nucleophilic substitution reaction on hexafluorobenzene. It was found that there were many pathways and for example, when the reaction was performed in exane under certain conditions, HF was evolved, but in other conditions, a second n heterocyclic olefin molecule acted as a base, abstracting a proton and generating a salt with fluoride. It was further found is that if triethylamine was added to the medium, this acted as a base and produced a salt uh, with uh, triethylammonium and fluoride. So I'm going to briefly talk about different pseudosolvents and the importance of solvation. Different solvents have different dielectric constants. These are relative dielectric constants that uh, are to be multiplied with the uh, vacuum permittivity, which, well, would in this scale would have a value of 1. So, for example, water has a dielectric constant of 80.4, so charges are 80 times more uh, shielded than in gas phase. Exane, on the other hand, has a, a dielectric constant of 1.89, so basically the, the shielding of the charges is much lower. And for example, there are other uh, solvents like DMSO, which has 47.2, DMF 38.3, methanol 30. 32.63 so basically these different solvents will stabilize different species and that also happens in real life because for example certain type of nucleophilic substitution reactions are performed in polar aprotic solvents such as DMF or DMSO or maybe acetonitrile or acetone while other reactions require less polar solvents so I'm going to talk about uh, two of the possible transition states. So by doing these calculations, first in N-hexane pseudosolvent, which has a relative dielectric constant of 1.89, we found that there was um, the the transitions after the transition state there was a uh, basically an HF abstraction, and that took as I showed in the previous video, it took quite a long uh, optimization time because to rearrange the molecule and to expel the HF. So, on the other hand, if we uh, use the dimethylformamide as pseudosolvent, which has a much higher dielectric constant of 38.3, what we saw that the an intermediate was produced that has basically a protonated adduct, NHO, uh, C6F5 adduct, solvated to fluoride anion, um, hydrogen bonded to fluoride anion. If we see the transition state energy is slightly lower in each case because, well, probably because the transition state itself is not stabilized uh, much more by the change in solvation, uh, change in, in basically in pseudo solvation, change in the dielectric constant of the pseudo solvent. But there's a, a larger difference between reactants and products. So basically, this uh, salt, which we this is a salt, this intermediate, is more stabilized than the neutral adduct. So, and this is only by changing the pseudosolvent. So now I'm going to show uh, the couple the animation of the transition state scans. As we can see now, this is the scan for the reaction in uh, exane, and we will see that the reaction actually has a lot of problems after the transition state to find the pathway to the last uh, 
define a structure so it has a slow period So now the HF uh, molecule has been ejected, basically. And this is the same reaction, only change is that the pseudosolvent is now DMF. We will see that this reaction is uh, was faster to, or this scan was faster to uh, optimize. The transition state is basically the same. But then the final product is the so. So now I wanted to discuss that there are actually several possible routes for this reaction, and in this picture I try to convey the different uh, possibilities that were studied. We also studied other possibilities. That basically, if you this is all done in hexane pseudosolvent, but basically, if at the beginning you don't add any other possible base, you get this. Um, product plus HF molecule in hexane. But if uh, on this transition state we add a molecule of triethyl amine, we go to an intermediate that's basically is the salt, the NHO CX5 plus fluoride salt hydrogen bonded or partially actually hydrogen bonded to um, this uh, triethyl amine and this becomes an intermediate on the reaction and then there's a second transition state that's simply a proton abstraction from the uh, carbon bond bridging the um, n heterocyclic carbene and c6f5 uh, moieties this is a different transition state and then this gives rise to two products which is the product that we want that is the C6F5 uh, substituted n heterocyclic olefin plus a triethyl amine HF adduct which actually remains as a neutral adduct because the pseudosolvent is hexane if this was a more polar solvent would become a salt would be become a triethyl amine uh, protonated triethyl amine plus fluoride so that is all just wanted to convey that using different just by changing the implicit solvation you can have a noticeable effect in the pathway of the reaction and I also wanted to say that when you're exploring, this is a very simple reaction, there are many more complicated things to study, but it's usually necessary to explore different pathways and uh, sometimes add different solvent molecules because what happens in the reaction may be quite different from what you expect to happen beforehand. So I always try to insist when I talk to people about calculations that you should always mine the solvent and you should always at least consider the possibility of uh, adding explicit solvent molecules particularly if you are exploring chemical reactions okay that's all for now thank you very much please if you enjoyed the video like and subscribe